So we were assigning a parametric equalizer to the six six vocals. Okay, that's an interesting sound, but it has no animation whatsoever. Why don't I make it so that when I move a wheel, it will change the frequency of that parametric. Let's hit edit. Let's look at the algorithm that we assigned. We put a parametric equalizer in there, in that slot. And if I scroll down to it and hit edit, I'm actually on the DSP control page, and I can see where my settings are. This is the DSP control page. It's, it's the very next page to algorithm. But there's more that we can do than just set static amounts for each of these parameters. What we can do is add real-time controls, and that's called DSP mod. That means digital signal processing modulation. Modulation means change. This is how we do it. Touch that soft button, and now we are controlling for each a parameter, right from pitch to the three parameters of our parametric EQ, and on down to the level that we talked about the layer volume before. We, for each of those, there's a set of real-time controls that I can patch in. Let me look at the uh, EQ frequency, and let me scroll to the right, and now I have a page of parameters, a half page of parameters, where I can assign real-time controls. The source of my modulation is off. There is no modulation, but let me add a source. One of the first ones that you find is mod wheel, M wheel. The mod wheel still doesn't do anything. That's because I haven't added a depth. Now, the depth here is going to be in sense. Again, very specific uh, uh, parameters because I might want to make it exactly two octaves. So that would be 2,400 cents. And all of a sudden, I have a parametric equalizer that on every single note that's controllable by uh, the mod wheel. Maybe I want something else. Maybe I actually want to start really low, or I'll change my adjust to be very low. And I'll make my depth be really high. And now I have a much wider range on which I'm going to operate. And I want to make it a little more drastic, so I'll go to my EQ, um, the EQ amp, and I'll turn that up a little bit. Ooh, that's more accentuated, but it's distorting, isn't it? Well, there's a pad. If I go back to DP, DSP control, every digital signal processor, if it adds any kind of gain to the sound, there's always, at the beginning of it, a way to pad down the, the uh, gain, just like the beginning stage of a mixer. So I am going to find that parameter. I went to the, e, uh, the DSP control page, and I see on my frequency at the bottom here, there is a pad. Not just key tracking and velocity tracking, but now there is a pad. And because I want to add a big boost, I'm going to boost that pad. And so now I've taken down by 4x the, the level going into this parametric equalizer so that I can add it back on this EQ amp page. No more distortion. Voila. That was a good move. I'm going to exit and save and save again. And so I'm not going to lose that one. Let's edit again and go back to where we were working. Algorithm right here. We were talking about real-time mods. Mod wheel is interesting, but there are many, many other possibilities. In fact, we're going to do a whole chapter on the control source list and what they can all do. But I'll give you a little uh, a preview right now. Instead of mod wheel, I might say attack velocity controls it. We can assign uh, any, any uh, controller like a pedal, for example. I could have the sustain pedal control this. And now my pedal is controlling it. Uh, and if I want to, I can assign uh, the system clocks. And now based on the uh, sequence tempo at the time, I'm actually in sync with that. Uh, there are many, many others. There's a key number, there's inverse attack velocity, uh, there, there is a uh, mono pressure, uh, which would be right here. There it is. So now my pressure controls it. Now that's source one. So I have source one. Let's go back to the mod wheel. And, and I have a depth control. There's also another way that you can control it, and that's a, 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 a more powerful source called source two. And source two has a depth control. And we touched on what you could do with that 
when we talked about layer delay. Say I want to have an LFO control that, or let's say we were looking at the, the clock source as being a good one for that. So we have a clock source we want to assign to it, and I didn't hear any depth control. I didn't hear any depth to that because I didn't set the depth. So let's set our depth to 4200, just like the source one had. Okay, that's pretty good, maybe a little less. That's very nice. Still pretty drastic, why am I less? That's very good. That's pretty good. Now, I don't want that all the time. Maybe I want that effect, but only when I throw the mod wheel. Okay, so let's cancel out source one because we're using source two now, which is a little more complex. The clock, the A clock, is now my source for modulation, but I have a depth control, and that will multiply itself by this source and come up with how much modulation is really going to be in the moment. This is one of the, uh, uh, this is how we do a delayed vibrato, for example. Uh, and this is also going to be how I do a conditional uh, clock source on this. So I would say that. The mod wheel is my depth control, the clock is my source, and min depth is going to be zero, which means when the mod wheel is at zero, there is no modulation. And when the mod wheel is at maximum, I'm going to set my maximum amount. So now I, I play the note, I hear no modulation, and as I move the mod wheel up, I hear the modulation increase. This is how the conditional vibratos are done in the orchestras, for example. So if I play the flute, there's an LFO controlling the amplitude and, the, and uh, several of the equalizers, and the depth control is the pressure, or the mod wheel. So source 2 is very powerful for doing uh, conditional modulation on the DSP functions.